भोजन में रहती है और भोला की सेवा ही अपना जीवन मानती है सर पर आकाश की छाया धरती पर घास का बिछोना पर्वत की दिस इज बैक टपू इन नेपाल a city preserved in its ancient glory as are many other cities and villages in this mountainous nation Nepal is rich in tradition but the country with a population of 29 million faces major changes in its way of life changes that are brought about by extreme weather Scientists at Kathmandu's Department of Hydrology and Meteorology are tracing oddities in Nepal's weather patterns that at first sight seem contradictory. In terms of rainfall, uh, we are uh, witnessing a very extreme rainfall events like heavy precipitation events are increasing in Nepal. So this results in the, the flash floods and the landslides in Nepal That's because of the, the complex topography of the Nepal. Uh, and not only that we are having uh, heavy precipitation events in the same time we are also having the droughts events uh, especially during the winter and pre monsoon season with the impact of climate change being potentially devastating nepal's government situated in kathmandu has joined what is called the pilot program for climate resilience a program that tries to combine smart solutions for climate change problems with overall development goals which means all hands on deck for government civil society and the private sector to find long term solutions instead of just relying on fate We set out to follow a team of climate experts from the World Bank and the Asian Development Bank to explore the impact of Nepal's destructive weather patterns. The experts are trying to access the glaciers of Langtang National Park which are known to be melting. And it will take several days by foot until we reach the glacier area in more than 4000 meters above sea level. Locals here are quick to point out that they fear the glaciers might soon be gone. Most of the glacier has melted already. In 15 or 16 years there will be nothing that remains. The water sources here are drying up. Pasang Wang Di Tamang has lived up here all his life and he's in fact one of the data collectors at the local weather station. His job is essential because reliable data are the foundation for effective climate solutions. In the past, rainfall was spread over many days. These years, the rain gets dumped in one day and there is nothing the next day. This year, we also didn't get much snow. There was only a little bit spread out over the mountain slopes. In the past, there were huge amounts of snow. That isn't happening anymore. Now the snow hardly accumulates. With most of the rainfall nowadays happening throughout short periods, this mountain region experiences major landslides that often bury entire villages. And it can trigger chain events when the landslide occurs close to a river. We have a Nepali word to describe this. It's called Bishahari. What happens is when there's a landslide that's happened that happens somewhere besides the river, the part of the whole hill slides down and blocks this river. The the water builds up and creates a major devastation when this suddenly bursts. When the water gushes out, the people downstream, their houses and their lives would be wiped out. Dangerous weather conditions in Nepal's mountains come with no warning. There is no alert system and many people die just like the residents of this house. A father and his daughter were killed here in a snow avalanche with a stone and mudslide. He tried to protect the girl with his body and took shelter under a bed. But the side wall collapsed and fell on the bed. It killed both of them. I saw both of them buried under the rubble beneath the bed. The police report documents the loss of life and property and it is just one of many similar cases in the police archives.
In the future, resilience here could mean an alert system that provides data in real time and would allow these officers to send in early warning and evacuate potential danger zones, helping people survive. The victims of storms and landslides are a reminder that the dangers of climate change are real and that they are happening now, even if the causes of climate change are disputed or are being traced to different routes. Many locals in this traditional culture here believe, for example, that landslides are nothing but a sign of angry gods. But in Nepal, like anywhere else, tradition and modern technology coexist. The monks here sport brand new cell phones and Buddhist ringtones are a must-have item, which is important because text messaging is a promising tool for disaster alert. Earlier, when they wanted to get a message across to people in Kathmandu, to people in another village, they had to travel or for days or they had to spend quite a lot of money to actually get to those places. And what they now say, look, we have this technology, it is very cheap to use, so you can get a message to people by, one, by just one press on the button. So they definitely see the use of this for, this, for other um, issues as well. But of course, there needs to be created some more awareness so that everyone is uh, on the same page on this. Climate resilience and cell phone penetration can work hand in hand. It is disasters that get most of the public's attention when it comes to climate change. But this hydropower plant, built into a mountain close to Nepal's border with China, delivers proof that climate problems which build up slowly over time can create even more havoc. With rainfall increasingly concentrated in short time periods and decreased snowfall, the power plant produces on average much less electricity contributing to Nepal's all too frequent power outages. So what we see is actually that the minimum flow of about a year ago is still higher than the maximum flow of this year. But especially in this year, in this winter season, is generation is reduced uh, by one third due to lack of water in river. Energy security will depend on the long-term design of such plans and has to be considered in Nepal's development strategy. Filling a simple jug of water can take a lot of time and effort in this village in the mid-mountain region of Nepal, where the local well has almost dried up. The rain here doesn't last long enough anymore to soak the mountain and replenish its water reservoirs. That leaves farmers with worthless land, which in turn leads to poverty and migration. We suffer from this lack of water. What can we do? This is reality. While it might appear that Nepal is facing unusual climate problems because of its setting in the Himalayas, a look at other regions that are hours away by plane reveals that they just mirror Nepal's problems. Traveling down the Ganges River, which originates here in the Himalayas, means going from one extreme to the next. When it rains, it pours endlessly in southern Bangladesh. The fun part is limited to children's soccer games after the rain has stopped. The adults are concerned about their families' livelihoods because cyclones and floods have become more violent in recent years and most people feel that there's little they can do about it on their own. There was a mosque here, but the flood destroyed it. There's nothing left. Only a pile of rubble. At the coastline, things are even worse. There are no dikes here that are capable of holding back storms. Miles of coastline are scarred, torn apart by cyclones that easily pushed floods inland.
The last flood has drowned everything here. It drowned the cattle and we had to move somewhere else for a while. Then we rebuilt everything when the water was gone. Now you can see water is everywhere again. The crops, rice fields, everything is underwater. The harvest gets destroyed and nothing remains. The most vulnerable are hardest hit. Women have a risk several times higher than men of dying in these storms and floods. Because they traditionally stay at home and guard their family's livestock, the most valuable asset. They will only leave the house when the destination is known and safe. Once the flood water washed away my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law got washed away as well. She floated far away from home and it took us a day to find her. We fear the water. But this emergency drill shows how Bangladesh has learned from past experience. Women are being guided to a concrete shelter. And the country's cyclone shelter programs are a successful demonstration of how to combine climate resilience and development. The concrete shelters that serve now as widely accepted safe houses for women and children in emergencies are used as schools during normal times. Making different authorities combine their efforts and maximizing resources for improving lives. But for other climate-induced problems, there is no such simple fix. The sea level in the coastal belt of Bangladesh possibly has gone up by um, 8 to 12 centimeters, which means the coastline being very flat, the coastline has moved maybe 20 to 30 kilometers inland. In the southwestern part, the increase in salinity in the river water is creating a big problem on uh, drinking water, water supply and sanitation problems. When seawater is flooding these fields, it has a long-term impact. It leaves soil that has become too salty to grow healthy crops, creating a dangerous gap between agricultural production and the needs of a growing population. Experiments with salt-resistant rice could thrive with international scientific cooperation. Nepal and Bangladesh are just two examples that show the wide range of measures needed to build climate resilience. And that means building a strategy for today, tomorrow and the difficult days ahead.